Hi, Brian here with Embrilliance. This is part five of Stitch Artist Level 3, and we're going to take a look at how to create and publish your own motifs. By now you're wondering about publishing. Let's start with something simple like a motif. I'm going to zoom in and we'll draw a motif real quick. Now, you may wonder what that's supposed to look like, and the whole point is you make anything you want to make it look like. I'm just going to click around with some points, and we'll make what sort of looks like a Greek key. And you can clean it up and edit it however you need to. Now, motifs are generally small in size. That's so that you can fit enough of them into a typical design so that you can see the pattern. When you're in metric mode and zoomed in quite a bit, you'll see these squares at one millimeter intervals, which can help you realize how big you're making it. If I made this a large motif, then I might only fit one inside of a giant fill. Wouldn't be really practical. Okay, now motifs can uh, be drawn with a couple different stitch types. Here I've just created the artwork, but we can set a run stitch on it, or more typically, actually a manual stitch. A manual stitch will just go from this point to this point to this point to this point and so on. You can also use satin stitches and that's about it really, various runs and satins. Okay, now that we've got it drawn, let's see what we need to do next. To publish the motif is pretty simple. We go up to the Create menu and select Publish Motifs. Here we have a chance to enter the digitizer name, in this case that's me, Brian Bailey, and a collection name. Now a collection name indicates that this could be a bunch of motifs, and that is in fact the case. On this design page, you see we have just the one design. However, each motif could be another design and a motif can have as many objects in it as you need. But let's keep this simple for right now. We're going to publish this for my use. That means it's going to be put into the library of motifs and it will show up when I need it for a motif fill or a motif run. I'm going to click OK and OK again, and now we'll take a look at how to use this motif. Now that we've made a motif, let's go ahead and use it. We'll create a simple line, and we'll turn it into a motif. And in this case, I don't want that one. Let's go add the one that we made. There's the category, Brian Bailey Outlines. And there's our Greek key. Pretty neat, huh? Level 3 has a fun feature. Here we can change the size of this motif or any motif that we have selected. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, and now I'm going to use a Level 3 specific tool, Adjust the Motif Scaling. With this, we can increase the scale of each motif, each copy, as we go along the line. You can do this with any combination of motifs as well. It makes a really neat effect. Now that you've seen motifs in action, let's just talk about a couple details for housekeeping purposes. You notice that when I started, I began on the baseline, the x-axis, and ended on the same axis. So imagine this is a sewing machine, and it's sewing along. This is the start of the stitch. It runs around and then ends in a straight line. Motifs are generally entered left to right and they're entered with the start and finish on the same line. And this is important because you will have a nice evenly balanced motif. However, if you desire, you can move those points and create offset designs, something like this, perhaps, and this will give us a different look. Let's go ahead and publish this, and this will change the one that we have. That's OK for what we're doing. And let's go back to our line. 
let's remove this one and add the updated version. So you can see now how most of the motif sits above the line that we've drawn on. You have control. It's up to you what you do with it.